Mix. What's up, kitchen kin folk? You know, I'm usually out of them streets chasing flavors, but today is just too damn hot. So I decided to do a throwback series where I go back and look at some of my best videos, see if I can put a little spice on. So when you're done checking out the video, let me know if I made you hungry or happy. Now before you put your hands on your hips and start saying, my grandmama taught me how to make gumbo. I know my gumbo is the best. I'm not saying your gumbo is not the best gumbo that's ever been cooked in the world. I'm just going to say that I can help you make it better. These are just a few tips and tricks that will help you take it up a level. Secret number one, have a drink before you get started. Okay, maybe that's just my secret. Okay. Secret number one is that gumbo is supposed to be a stew, not a soup. If I can take a spoon of your gumbo and look at it and I can see all the way straight through the broth like you could with a ramen broth or something like that, you made soup, it's not stew. Your roux is what controls the thickness of your broth that your broth should be somewhere between a clear broth and gravy. It should be somewhere in the middle. It should have some thickness to it. It should cling to the spoon a little bit. It shouldn't just pour off like a glass of water. Secret number two. Quiet as it's kept, this is how I decide whether or not I'm going to eat gumbo at your house. If you say, hey, I'm making gumbo. And I say, really? How you make your roux? And you say, what's a roux? Just pour me a drink. I'll go somewhere else and eat. Now, for those of you who don't know what a roux is, you never made gumbo. You made fish soup. You made crab soup. You made shrimp soup. You made soup. A roux is what generally makes a gumbo a gumbo. A roux is generally cooking fat and flour together to make a thickening. Um, you can use butter. You can use oil. My choice is to use bacon fat because if, you're going, if it's going in the broth, it's going in your gumbo, why not add some extra flavor to it? And what adds flavor? Like bacon. Mmm, bacon. So, cook some bacon, use that fat to make your roux. It should be an equal portion of flour to fat. Or in this case, flour to bacon fat. That's how you make your roux. Now let's take a look at how it's done. Now, roux is a personal thing, but remember, the lighter it is, the more thickening power it has. The darker it is, the more flavor it has. So you find your happy medium. Secret number three, the brown bits. Now, I'm lazy. Everybody knows that. So I try to use as few dishes as possible. So what I do is when I'm getting started, the first thing I'll do is I'll cook my chicken in my pot. And I'll take it out and I'll deglaze the pot with a little chicken broth. Scrape all those bits up, all the little brown bits are in the bottom of the pot. Pour them in the bowl where I'm putting my chicken. Then I'll cook my sausage. Both sides, cook a little of the grease out of those. That can go in with the, uh, with your roux also. But use that broth with all the brown bits in it, all that flavor to add to your broth in the pot and give you so much more flavor. Secret number four, the stuff to stock ratio. Your stock, your broth, your gumbo should have enough stuff in it where every time I stick a spoon in it and take a bite, there's something on it besides rice and broth. Put enough meat in your broth. It shouldn't be like soup where I got a fish around the bottom where I got a whole bowl of broth there. No, every bite should have something in it. If you don't have that much stuff, don't put that much broth in it. Simple as that. Secret number five, and this is the important one. 
what I'm gonna tell you, something that no other gumbo video will ever tell you. I'm gonna give you a secret. Don't put crab in your gumbo, unless you're using lump crab. Don't put chicken wings in there. If you want chicken wings, go get you some hot wings. But gumbo, you should be doing this. Nobody wants to stick their fingers in the gumbo. They won't tell you that because the best gumbo in the world is free gumbo. As long as you cook it, they're going to eat it. But they're not going to tell you. But nobody wants to stick their hand in the gumbo and, and crack crab legs or pull the tails off. Pull the tails off your shrimp, people. I don't know why people would put shrimp in the gumbo and don't take the tails off. I ain't got time for that. This is what I want to do. So don't make it difficult for people. You do that and it's a better experience for everybody. I guarantee it. Now let me clear this up right now because I know I'm going to get all kind of hate because I got a bunch of hate last time. I did not say no crab in the gumbo. That's not what I said. I'm saying serve your crab on the side. You understand? Whether it's crab or crab legs, give people the option. Because if somebody invites you to the house and you done got all cute and put your good clothes on and you show up and they serve in gumbo and they got all the crab in and you want to try to eat the crab and Unless you like me and you feed your shirt every time you eat, you're going to be mad because you didn't got gumbo drippings all down the front of your clothes. So give people the option to have crab if they want to, especially if you ain't offering bibs or nothing like that. Let's eat some gumbo. Pull the grease out of those. That can go in with the uh, with your roux also. But Again, scrape all the brown bits up, deglaze the pot with a little chicken broth, pour it in with your chicken. Put all this in the same thing. Use that broth, or all that, that chicken broth with all those brown, use that chicken broth with all the brown bits in it. <laughs> and you, okay, let's try again.